you haven't seen anything on my second channel, I assume, but we do like um Mooler? Yeah, we do watch parties, but they're a little bit different. We we essentially like cut them so that a lot of the clips from the actual thing are in there. And then we animate them a bit yeah, so it zooms in and out. Uh, Copyright coverage. It's a lot of editing. Yeah, it takes fucking ages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. people like them. <laughs> and so we're making one for the Lord of the Rings trilogy for uh because it's been twenty years since Return of the King came out in a week's time. Or weekish. You're doing it for the whole trilogy? Yes. It, it'll it'll be just... like a seven, eight hour video. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> this is what I mean. When I tell people, you're like, oh yeah, I can see what you mean. And then you're like, I don't know if you know what I mean. <laughs> a seven, eight hour video? I told what you, the heck? I've got three people, including myself, working full time on this. And we have done for the past like month. And we're still not done yet. Oh my god, dude. What the heck are you talking about for seven, eight hours? Well, I mean... Again, I just don't know how familiar you are with my stuff. I, my nickname is the Long Man for a reason. <laughs> like uh, all my yeah. videos are insanely long. I mean, long. there's Long Man, and then there's like, <laughs> there's <laughs> there's that. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yes, I agree. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's true. I guess so. Yeah, I always wondered with that, like long form content like that. That that's. I always figured long form was like <laughs> like ten minutes, <laughs> ten minutes, twenty minutes. But I mean, you know. Once upon a time, is, yeah. That's, yeah, like, um, do you remember old YouTuber Dash Star? No. Okay. He was like one of the old, really OG Star Wars YouTubers. He's my buddy, and he does Diablo content now, but some of his videos are like 10 hours long. Yeah, well, see, that's the thing. Yeah. When I started my channel, I was told by many people, do not make long videos. And I was like, but mm -hmm. I have so much to say, and I don't know. I feel like YouTube's the place for it, if it is anyone. If... <laughs> you know, I... I want to make them longer, but I almost feel like, and I think that's, that's kind of the direction I'm taking now, but I almost feel like, I don't know, don't people get bored? But to be honest, they don't. It's like they, they're like, please, I want you to keep talking. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I think there's sure. audiences for both. Like, um, right. there are audiences out there who literally were like, I can't fucking stand watching 10 minutes, uh, videos longer than 10 minutes. But then there are also yeah. videos, but people who were like, I can't stand watching videos that are 10 minutes. They don't get into enough. So. It was fun when they clash. <laughs> Let's get a vote of hands. Do you guys like long form content or do you like short form content? Mm. So spam one if you like long form, spam two if you like short. Do we go? Well, that's a good, yeah, that's, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Well, thanks, AF. What are your thoughts on the final fight of Kenobi? Oh, I, I pretty much hate everything about Kenobi. <laughs> um, I think the first episode was the only one that I was vaguely positive about. Uh, I think we talked to you before about how we did a lot of speculation over on our site about like how we wanted this to happen, wanted this to happen, wanted this to happen. The crazy potential, the prequels have so much more story to be able to tell us, and yeah. all this. And then you see what they do, and you're like, oh, okay. And then it makes you sort of angry at it. Uh, and then you get the Reva stuff. And as far yeah. as I felt, the um, the acting was on point. I thought that Ewan McGregor was giving it pretty much everything, but um, oh, yeah, it felt like a retread of a lot of stuff that we've done already. It didn't feel like it was progressing anything. And it made even less sense then than, you know, like a lot of people complain, like, oh, if you'd only killed Anakin at the end of Return of the Revenge mm -hmm. of the Sith. But, like, I think there's plenty of reasons you can say for why that didn't happen. But it's especially weird at the end of the Kenobi series. Like, you'll leave him. <laughs> like, <It> okay. <laughs> Again. <laughs> yeah. Again. I know. Again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. You know, the whole thing was like, oh, you feel sorry for him. That show was, you know, I made an actual long video last night, which probably come out tomorrow or something on um how disney plus is just destroying star wars with their shows yeah. and not because it's just show format but because disney plus show format is just so atrocious and ridiculously horrible that i feel like they just take you know what otherwise could be a two episode uh season uh or story and they just dilute it into this yeah, stretch stretch out it out like crazy eight episode 12 episode bullshit and interject a whole bunch of fluff that we don't need and we don't care about, like Reva, for example. Mm -hmm. And people are like, okay. And they just give them enough to like, let's get to the point. Let's get to the point. Let's get to the point. You eventually get there. And you're like, okay, cool. That was the season. But I literally just wasted eight weeks when I could have had this probably, if this was a movie, probably in half an hour. A lot of it feels like bait and switch because they know what people want to see. They're like, yeah, hey, 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 sure. look, it's the... The Order 66 scenes, huh? huh? And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. And they go, and here's Reva. And you're like, who's that? Like, she does this, 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 and then right. she gets stabbed, and then she's alive, and then she gets stabbed again, and then she's alive. And you're like, what the fuck? Right. And, and, and the Order 66 scenes, I mean, it, it wasn't anything really... No. ...all that spectacular. 
Um, you know, they kind of used, oh, Ahmed Best to, like, you know, he's back now. He's a Jedi. Awesome. You know, redemption for his, his hard time that he had in the prequels, which is great. But, you know, we need more than that for the story. Yeah, I, I don't understand that as a form of like, oh, it's like an apology. It's like, why not give him a character? Why, well, why not continue with what, like, where did he go after that? You that's know, that's like what happened I, I guess what I'm saying is like the scenes we have of him, he barely says anything. And it's like, you can There's have nothing. dialogue. You can tell us what his history is somewhat. And then you can, of course, follow him. See where he goes, but... Nope, maybe we'll get that uh, season four. I don't know. No, we'll get it in a comic. No, you, season four is going to be a movie now, apparently. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> According to Zack Snyder. Well, uh, how do you feel about that? Way better. Way better? I, Way um, better. I don't know what to expect anymore from what they're even up to. I feel like they're not sure themselves of what they're doing. I feel like season three was completely cobbled together. Oh, season three was a joke, man. I don't know what happened. How do you go from season one and two to season three? Oh, there's a distinct drop in uh, execution. It's so rushed. And uh, Not I don't know, resetting the whole storyline as well. As was that. It was the freaking story. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> what is the story, dude? Do you love the ending where it's like they lived happily ever after? Little, I mean, uh... well, there's parts of that that I liked, but I, then I was just kind of... Like that that's it? This whole thing well, so, is just Moff Gideon? Yeah, without context, you might be able to sort of make it work. But obviously, in the context of they separate, they both got their different, you know, worlds to, to travel and all this stuff. And then you go, actually, no, they live together forever. You're like, what, no, when yeah, it's like, you all right. figure out what you wanted to want? <laughs> no, yeah, there was something going on there. I think, you know, if they put Tony Gilroy, Dave Filoni, John Favreau, and Sam Witwer, as we said, into mm -hmm. a one project, don't have anyone meddle with it, it's yeah, you really see the good. right people in the right places. I, why are they not bringing Sam Witwer in? I like, don't Why are they just keeping know. him as... Um, I, you know, a lot of their uh, upper echelon decisions are absolutely baffling. Because like, mm. I, I assume you're less familiar with the Marvel stuff, but it's almost every day we get a new piece why? of information about how the MCU is getting ripped apart from the inside out for no reason at all. Um, you know, the, the right The Multiverse of Madness, which I've got a six-hour video on talking about how... It's just fucking awful. They've got the writer for that is going to be writing the Avengers movies. It's like, you guys, do you guys not want to make money then? <laughs> but that's okay if you don't. Well, I mean, it's just like the Ray movie coming out, you know? Yeah. This um, um, obeyed Chinoy. Like, it doesn't seem like she really likes men, to be honest. A lot of the people that I've heard. think that's not going to happen. What do, you, uh, what do you think that movie? I think it'll happen. I think it will too. Sounds yeah. like the thing Disney would do. For sure. 100%. Flush more money down the toilet and piss people off even more. But hey, maybe now they're going to actually, um, I don't know, give Finn a good story. But it's like, do we even care anymore? It's I've seen a lot blue. of people speculating about that. I was like, is uh, John Boyega on board with going back for that movie yet? We even yeah, know? he is, apparently. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, it would be nice after three movies if we could get a story for Finn. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that, isn't that fucking crazy? Like... Luke's primary reputation across planet Earth has been created by those three movies, and John Boyega yeah. had three, and people are still waiting for his story. Yeah, and it was arguably probably the most interesting story. Yeah. You know, oh, dude, I was pretty sold when TFA's scene did the whole, like, Bell Shocks, Stormtrooper struggling right. to stay. I was like, yeah. this is, Star Wars is uh, doing something here, okay. Yeah, this is cool. This is really cool. But, no. So in a yeah. different direction. But, you know, that's, and I always wonder what, what was their thought process? And I just kind of came to the conclusion that there wasn't one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we've heard as much, right? Like the, the notes and ideas and pathways changed completely while crossing yeah. over the different creators. Right. Simon Pegg, yeah. Daisy Ridley, and a bunch of others have talked about the lineage of Ray changing all the time. Yeah. Which tells you everything, right? Like it, it had it had nothing to do with a meaningful uh, story for her. It was just which do you think the fans will be most interested by? And like, like even the do you remember even the TLJ fans? They were really pissed off when they uh, retconned it from nobody to Palpatine. Oh, they were so pissed. They were really peeved. Yeah, yeah. the the Raylos. Yeah, was it the Raylos? Well, it, uh, I don't know what you call TLJ fans, but uh, <laughs> those guys, because uh, they love the whole, like, a Jedi can come from nobody. Even the most powerful one could come from nothing and have no training and all that. And it's like, 
oh, okay. <laughs> if that's what floats your boat. Um, and then, of course, they were like, what? She's a Palpatine. That ruins everything. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was wild, dude. When that movie came out, I don't know if you got this, but people started saying, like, this is the what we get when people like Mola would have their way. I was like, Rise of Skywalker's what? <laughs> Why would I like that? It's like, well, because Ray's no Palpatine. Is that what you wanted? Oh, God. No, what I would have wanted was for Finn to have been a student of Luke, get his mind wiped, and then when he's on that planet, just, just gets disoriented, and then it comes to, kind of. And then we follow his story and his progression. And, we, he, you know, Ray is trying to find Luke, and then somehow Finn is with her. And... Luke sees Finn and like embraces him, and Finn is like, "What is going on?" Something they just couldn't do was um, take him seriously. No yeah. character. He's got a seriously like harrowing backstory, but they just keep making it like fun, adventurous, woo woo woo. And I think that that vibe is something that they thought they needed to have to have a successful like family adventure film that everyone can watch. But um, they seem to forget there's a lot of serious shit in the uh, in the OT and the prequels. Yeah, well, I think that's kind of the main issue is that they think they know what Star Wars is by just kind of um, nostalgia baiting, and you know they look at numbers and they're this. And, you know, they were going to have the Galaxy's Edge to be the original trilogy, and then they thought, well, no, we're going to make so much money with the sequel trilogy, so we're just going to make it all sequel style. Yeah. What? What? <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. I. How is that working? Uh. Catastrophically, from what not I can good. Tell, you know? it's, yeah, it reminds me yeah. of um, this game I play every once in a while called Dead by Daylight. It had uh, Freddy Krueger oh, in it. Yeah, it's like my and favorite then, game. And it's like Freddy Krueger, Elm Street, awesome. You look at the model, and it's based after the 2010 remake. It's not based mm -hmm. on Robert England's Freddy Krueger. And it's like, what are you yeah. doing? Everyone knows Freddy as Robert England's one. Everyone forgot the 2010 one. Why are you using him? And I was thinking to myself, I was like, well, I probably have to. That's yeah. probably the updated license. It's probably like actual like rules in place that if you use the likeness, you've got to use the one that they're trying to make use of in like the actual newest iterations because they can't have Robert anymore. He's way too old to be playing the character. He's not going to be any more films. So if there's any yeah. marketing purpose to it, you're going to want to... And it's like, that's... It's not the right brain to go about this. <laughs> like Whenever they have Star yeah. Wars cameos in anything, you know everyone wants a Vader. They don't want Rey. No. Yeah, but Ray's our newest girl, and she's going to get another movie. You're like, yeah, but nobody cares. Well, they don't, and that's their fault. It's not because she's a girl, but, you know, hey, Freddie Prince Jr. will say that it's because we're sexist. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and you get all kinds of cope from, like, he's like, we all love Leia, and it's like, yeah, but you only like her because not the main. Okay, Luke's main, okay? But we'll <laughs> tolerate a woman if there's a man there or something like that. Like, okay. There's a lot of cope. It's like you can never really get your way with those people. You know, if you say one thing, it's another thing. It's like, oh, but it's only because of this. They just kind of discount whatever you say. So, oh, well. The, uh, the weight that, you know, rings around their neck is uh, uh, Ripley and Sarah Connor. They're always the ones that get brought up because mm -hmm. they're famously beloved. They're the main characters, at least somewhat, in their series. Is. And so it's like, you know, what are you going to say to that? And, and the only response they have these days is like, of course you said those. You always say those. Well, True. Yeah, why? Why wouldn't we? You know, it's like those are really good characters that were main characters, and they're females. And if we saw you them know. in, you know, any reference, be it in a video game, future content, any way, shape, or form, and they were switched to men, we'd be like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Exactly. We wouldn't be happy. That's <laughs> not how it works. No, but I mean, that's the rhetoric that yeah. these kinds of people want to push on us. So, oh, you know. What did I say? Or what did I see the other day? When I announced that you and I were doing a stream, I, there was someone who was like, oh, the two biggest grifters and stuff. <laughs> what is this, this grifter word that people keep using? It's just so unoriginal at this point. It is weird like, how that came to be because it's like this notion that we don't actually hate, slash, have issues with the current state of Star Wars. We do it because it's good to make money from it. Right. Um, so you do wonder if they had access to some kind of machine that could tell them that we are being genuine, what would they say then? Uh, I mean, for me, you would just have to look at my channel and be like, oh, this guy really loves Star Wars. <laughs> I mean, I don't get it. When we have extensive discussions about some of the most minutia details and like, you know, favorite color of lightsaber and which of the background aliens do you find the most interesting to look at it's stuff like that it's like how could you listen to us talking about all this shit and then you find it's like oh they're not listening at all they don't listen to any of our stuff no they don't and there was a guy that 
didn't watch, well, I'd say most of them don't watch any of the videos, but they just kind of have a rhetoric around it to fit, fit their narrative. But that's just the way it is. You kind of just have to get used to it and be like, well, yeah, whatever. Those aren't the people I cater to. So aren't the people that make videos for. Go yeah, ahead. I've definitely found that over time of being less and less interested in sort of being on the defensive of your own uh, sort of stuff instead yeah. just keep making stuff. Yeah, just keep making stuff. Keep doing stuff. You know, it, to be honest with them, I mean, they don't understand. We've been doing this for so many years. I've been doing this almost eight years. And I understand YouTube and Star Wars YouTube, I would say, as much as the next YouTuber or more. So it's like, I know exactly what does bring in money. And there is nothing that brings in more money than when Star Wars is really good. I when would people are excited about Star Wars. Celebrate Star Wars. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. My biggest month was over 60 million views, and that's when The Mandalorian Season 2 came out. The finale. The, it's so that, funny. That month. Looking right? back at the history, because uh, we, were, we were in a bit of trouble, EFAP wise, because we were like the only people on the internet who did not like Season 2. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've, I've told you, I'm, I'm way more down on Disney's. Right. Uh, I know, yeah, I know you are. I know you are. I know you are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's I interesting. Thought it was, I thought it was badass. Yeah, I know. But it was like, there was that month. And then, but then when Star Wars is not popping, I mean, it's not nearly the same. No, there's a, there's a dour aspect. And I've talked about it with my other sort of co hosts on different podcasts. It's our, part of our job is to try and turn that back into entertainment and camaraderie and sort of community building because right. it's not somewhere you want to go. You don't want to go to just the place of, well, that's that. We lost. Like, no, 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 no. Like, we're, no. Celebrate the good stuff, try and hope for the best in the future, and, and then start to try and highlight some things that, you know, you're not as familiar with that are still good that are coming out now. A lot of people talk about the new Godzilla film. It's been... Uh, yeah, I keep hearing about this. I haven't seen it. I have not seen it either because they haven't released it in the UK yet, but they will. And uh, I'll check it out. It'll be fun. So what's the deal? They only made... They only spent fifteen million on this movie, something like that. Uh, I've heard the director's been saying that the reportings on the numbers are higher than he actually got, and he wishes he got some of the things they've been reporting. But at the same time, obviously, as you can imagine, if a film getting this level of praise at that scope of special effects, and yet it's still like a tenth of what the average Disney movie is costing. Yeah, but, um, the boy Jeez. and the heron is probably going to uh, swipe away Wish is going to be interesting as well. Culturally speaking, Disney are just bleeding everywhere. I kind of feel like they almost inflate their movies just to write off stuff. It could be that. Uh, hard yeah. to say. Because you do wonder, you watch some of these things, you're like, where's the money going? What's happening? Yeah, literally. Like I, with, especially with Kenobi, I was like, everything just looks so condensed. Dude, when they like, fought in the quarry or whatever it was, it felt mm -hmm. really cheap. It did. It felt like you know, a fan film could be more expansive than that. It was yeah. weird. So if you were to write the sequel trilogy, where would you start? Um, well, this will be interesting because I don't know how you're going to feel about it. But the one that we've ran a couple of times on EFAB, the, the goal is that we were going to take Leia to a more hawkish place um, in terms of her control over the, the New Republic and the crushing of what remains of the Empire sort of thing. Try and get yeah. it so that she searches out and annihilates. And at first it would be like big... Sort of sex that are, that are still planetary based or whatever she's wiping them out and do fighting wars and it's, it's a good fight mm -hmm. but, you know as time goes on she starts crushing people who have no chance and then right. she starts like maybe wiping out places that you're not even 100 percent sure that they were really going to do anything anyway but they are empire or at least remnant right um luke would probably be already working on uh, building the jedi back up um, I'm not sure where we'd sit on force ghosts and exactly who's going to be available at what times that's a difficult one to balance um we you know not go in the direction of having like force ghosts that can actually hurt people. That seems to be uh, that would fuck everything up. And then yeah, <laughs> we were thinking Han would be like a you know keep the the role of general, but he would be the one that would pick up first on how they might be going a bit too far. Um, okay, I've always been interested in the uh, is it Yuzang Vong? I forget exactly yeah, yeah. how to pronounce it. That's uh, yeah yeah I don't know. A bigger, more evil force that can come in that binds the remains of the Empire with uh, the Republic sounds like a cool storyline to run as well. Yeah. Um, but the, the main thing I want is to desperately try and respect the three mains as best you can while also giving them something to learn and change with, right? Like, um, I think the tri they would try and bring Luke back in using the power of the Jedi to sort of, you know, politically gain a foothold and that he'd have to make a decision whether or not he wants to be 
used that way. Um, right. Especially with the knowledge that he would gradually... I, I quite That's the one thing maybe I like from TLJ is that he started to learn about the prequel era and he's, uh, you know, he's wondering about everything to do with the Jedi. Mm -hmm. Not to become disenfranchised or fucking hobo <laughs> level and abandon everyone. <laughs> Just a matter of like, hmm... Seems like they did make some mistakes, and that's interesting. Yeah. How did they yeah, make them? Yeah, 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 I like that. <laughs> Let me go suck on some green tea. Oh my god, man. You know, I remember being in the cinema and being like, what am I watching? Who, why? Like, Dude, what? I I remember that scene too. I was like, what the f <laughs> What is this? I didn't, you just didn't get it. No. Uh. Get to the end of that film, but what was that's that'll be an interesting question because uh, I've shared it a couple of times with people. I came home and I was confused. I'd seen TLJ, I, I had the hype of the trailer, and I just sat there like, What the fuck? And I had two friends in a call already discussing it. And I came in and they were talking about how much they loved it. And I was like, Okay, help me out. What did you like? And I remember one of them, Metal Commander, he was like, uh, That that Snoke guy, he was cool. And I was like, Yeah, sure, why? And he was like, oh, you know, because he was like this big, like, you know, oh, shit, this villain's going to destroy everything and take over everything. And then he just like, oh, he gets killed, like, so casually. It's so, like, wow. And I was like, like nothing, yeah. okay, but, like, why, why is that interesting? And he's like, oh, I don't know, I guess because, like, a lot of, you know, like, the Emperor, you expect them to be, like, there for the trilogy, maybe, or really powerful, but he, I guess he wasn't. And it was, I remember this dead silence, <laughs> and he was just like, <laughs> okay. So, anything else? And it's like, yeah. uh, yeah, you know, the fight scenes, like, uh, they were pretty cool. And, uh, you know, as this conversation went on, the three of us were like, wait, was this movie shit? <laughs> <laughs> we were like, oh, wait, no. It was. Dude, I was the first one in the theater. I was the last one to leave. People, literally, the staff came in. They were cleaning up the popcorn and mopping and stuff. And I was just literally sitting in my seat. I remember perfectly. Sitting in there looking at the blank screen like, uh, what the fuck did I just watch? What, what, how, what, what? <laughs> I just didn't get any of it. And I was so confused because I was expecting something so different. I think we all were. Yeah. And uh, it was kind of almost like that could have been the ninth film. It could have been the end. But it literally had no place to go after that. Brian has said he likes writing films that have ends. Like, uh, and, and so <laughs> I guess he forgot he was right. Film two or three. <laughs> they, uh, I, I love that story. It's so stupid. Wait, he said that? Yeah, he said he doesn't like writing films that have like open endings or, you know, oh, lead into shit. another film. He wants to have his film have its ending. It's like, okay. Oh, crazy. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Interesting decision. Um, yeah. The more the three of us talked about it, uh, the more I started like making notes about how much I hated certain choices. And then I was like, shit, I got to make a video. I don't, yeah. I don't know if you know, but that's, that's what uh, launched my channel, was my TLJ video. Was it? Yeah, it was. Uh, I, it's really cobbled together if you go look at it. It's like, I guess, six years old now or however much. Um, but I, I decided, I, I was just, I recorded me ranting, and then I cut it all up, and I was like, what visual should I use? And I just chose a rotting watermelon. Oh. <laughs> People didn't quite get it. <laughs> oh my like, god. It, it, over the course of the video, it gradually gets more and more rotted. It's like... What do you what do you mean by this? <laughs> if you want uh, full levels of cope like you've never seen before, you can watch my old The Last Jedi videos where I'm like, guys, there's a plan behind this. I know it. There's no way that Lucasfilm would end it like that. They're just trying to trick us. But like, believe me, nine is gonna be so amazing. It's gonna be. I just was like coping so hard. I'm like, there's no way that this company that I, I was in love with all my life would create something that was so shit yeah uh but for, they did for me i if i did like a top 10 top 20 top 50 list of characters of all my time favorites i'd be naming from all kinds of you know games films whatever have you uh all kinds of eras luke would be in there i don't know how high he would be right but after tlj i realized that he was a lot higher than i thought he was because <laughs> uh i kept thinking about what they'd done and then i was like you know you rewatch the ot and i was like holy fuck i'm angry I was like, yeah. I'm very angry right now, damn. Right. You know what? I got an idea. Uh, and chat, you can let me know what you think about this too. I would love to have two hardcore sequel fans. God. Shills, if you call them. I want to call them that. 
here on the channel and it would be like a respectful two on two debate on the sequel trilogy, prequel trilogy, and Star Wars. I think that would be pretty entertaining. Better find the right people, I guess. We would have to find the right people. Like probably probably people who like despise us and talk shit about us. I was gonna us. say most sequel fans <laughs> hate me. <laughs> Just people who absolutely hate us. Chat, I'm gonna leave it to you guys. Go find the most toxic <laughs> sequel fans you can who absolutely despise Mahler and I and love the sequel trilogy with all their heart. We would love to have them on the channel. I think it would make for great content Dude, and a great discussion. It is hard to find people who like all three of the sequels. No, but you can find people who love, you know, The Last Jedi. Yeah, definitely. You can find them. I'd say there's more love for The Last Jedi now than there is for TFA and The Rise of Skywalker put together. Like... Seems like everyone stopped caring about TFA because of the false promise, and then the Rise of Skywalker yeah. everyone hated anyway. Because if you like The Last Jedi, then you are a nuanced film <laughs> critic or whatever. Yes. You know, you are. You, you are, are film literate. You are media literate, if you like. Yes, you are special. You, yeah, Chef's Kiss, you know, that's. It is what it is. I mean, how much do you come across people talking about the themes of the, that film as opposed to the characters? They never talk about the characters. They only talk about the themes. Let's think. Uh, it's it's uh, it's start like having these conversations on my channel about because uh, I love th like thematic through lines in a lot of my favorite stories, but you can't just have them. For example, you have like the shittiest film in the world, but you have a character at the end announce, "Isn't it great to be friends with people?" You're like, okay, that doesn't mean that's the theme now. Like, just because a character said it, that doesn't <laughs> like. You know you have know. Um, Kylo saying, let the past die, kill it if you have to, right? Yeah. The basic read is that he's saying that, and that's what the film, his point of view is. Read right. level two is, no, 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 the film actually presents that he is wrong. Read level three is, no, that's what Ryan wanted to do, but the film kind of presents that he's correct. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. it's like, oh, yeah. shit, okay. What, what do you think their argument is with Luke Skywalker? Because I assume you had a major problem with his Oh, God, the amount of... Too conversations i had to have with that so this is this has been said to be like the most respect you can give him um representative of how you know the the legacy of luke how he was known throughout the world of star wars which is reflective of our world it was too much of a weight for the man himself and he couldn't take any he recused himself sort of thing until you know ray comes there and reignites that spark within him and he does come through and he does embody the legend through uh saving them at the end on crate that's like the nicest possible way you could describe what happened Right. Not the truth, though. The, uh, the huge flaw in all of it is that he abandoned his family in the galaxy. Not something Luke would do. What, what about the truth? It's not the truth. Like, to say that he, uh, you know, he embodied Luke in that film is uh, it's just a lie. It's not true. It's not, it's not representative. And this is the thing. You can have your opinions on film. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, yeah. it, you, you, they do hit a stone wall with the whole, like, why would he have left his family to die? And they're like, well, because he was he was weak, and it's like, no, no, that doesn't work. It doesn't work. There, there, there are certain fundamental characteristics of certain people, especially in media, when you can see their lives. There's certain actions they can't take, otherwise you're you're portraying a different character. I think all sequel fans will eventually come to the same sort of explanation that uh, Balin Skull came to. Or well, that it was all where cringe, was, where he was talking about the the truth of it, <laughs> like the idea. I miss the idea of it, but not the truth, the weakness. <laughs> He's on to something with that. He we, is. We've covered people that said in 10 years time, TLJ will be seen as good as uh, Empire. Like, well. I perhaps. highly doubt that. I highly doubt that as well. It's still pretty hated. And I would say the one thing that uh, TLJ fans can't deny you know, they can deny all day that it's a bad film, but they can't deny it destroyed Star Wars. It set Star Wars on a path where its fan base completely splintered and that Disney had no idea how to solve the problem of the narrative. They do deny that, though. It's, but it's in a shambles. They haven't made a movie since Rise uh, of Skywalker when they once upon a time told us to be one per year. Right, but they do what every narcissist does, and they put the blame onto us. Fans? <laughs> Instead of the film, they put it onto, well, you guys are just toxic, you're living in the past. Even you know, they it's... don't like Rise of Skywalker, though. So I know. 
But I guess they'd say that we're the reason for why Rise of Skywalker is the way it is. We're the reason why Luke catches the lightsaber in Rise of Skywalker. We're the reason why they rewrote the Kamikaze to be one in a million. Absolutely. Even though they show it happening again at the end of that film. Do you remember that? In the background no, in we... space, they show another hyperspace Kamikaze working. It's over Endor, I think. Really? Yeah. yeah I remember being like, what the fuck? You just said the, it was one the, in a million. The Holdo thing? Yeah. You can see the same uh, graphic that they used to represent it. Oh, so it's a it's a two in a million. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Well. Oh well. Oh, here we go. There we go. This is gonna blow up. Star Wars theory says last Jedi fans are all narcissists. No, I said they think like some narcissists. Wait, I mean, you gotta speak in a way that's not clippable. Gonna constantly mm. be like, or oh, do I mean that? No, because the, then they'll just <laughs> chop things out and rearrange it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the next step is just take jokes and say, like, look what they said very seriously in the stream I definitely watched. Uh, I think I'm just going to make a video and say the most outlandish cancelable things so that they all have clips and they can just use them. Right at the end, be like, there you go. Yeah, I just want to make their lives easy. Yeah. Yeah. It works so hard. No. I'm a people pleaser. Uh, jeez. So where are we going from here? Star Wars wise. <laughs> Star Wars. Like, uh, you... I mean, whoa. did you see the new Mace Windu book? No, coming no. Out? I haven't. Uh, are those are those mm. engaged with like in a decent level by fans? You know what? I actually found the books to be pretty good. Okay. Um, like the new books, some of them, but this new Mace Windu book, it's essentially happening after Phantom Menace when Qui Gon dies. And Qui-Gon was um, sort of like a hero to this planet, which was all sand and it got melted up and turned into glass. Okay. And there were like warring factions on the planet. And so now it's like Qui-Gon's dying wish to Mace for him to go back and save the people or something like that. Could be good. Yeah, I mean, that sounds like Not a sure. decent enough uh, <laughs> miniseries but, uh, premise to me. Yeah, it could be good. But, you know, I'm, I'm always now so skeptical and wary of what oh, they're no. going to do to Mace Windu. That applies to like every single thing that comes out these days. I'm skeptical and weary of uh, what they'll do. Because, yeah, the future of Star Wars, like, you're, you're excited for Tales of the Jedi. I'm season Very. Two. Super um, excited. The Bad Batch is on the way. Yeah, season. but, you know, it's fun. But it's not, it's not something that I'm like, yeah, but, I mean, I like the characters. Then we got Acolyte, which is, uh, as far as I'm aware, the one we should have the most concern for. In I think we should be the most concerned for. I was the most excited for Acolyte of any other show, but because of Le Leslie Headland's claims and just kind of the way she her energy shifts, mm -hmm. uh, I'm very skeptical now. And then Skeleton Crew, which I think nobody's got any expectation for yet. Could be amazing, could be shit. But I will say, the fact that that's our sort of selection... And then on top of all of it is a Ray movie. It just feels like Star Wars is completely. Oh lost. no! So so right. So apparently before the Ray movie is supposed to be the Mandalorian movie. Right. Heard, so that's confirmed, or is that rumor? Zack Snyder. I mean, so you know, it's a little better than a rumor, but um, mm -hmm. still a rumor. Well, still feels weird for Star Wars to be in this position, right? Compared to because all the things we just ran through, they don't feel particularly uh, hype. I feel more so like, hmm. Like, okay, we're, we're getting rations kind of thing. Yeah, a little bit. And that's the thing. If they have really good rations, then it can help be build. But uh, I, don't know. I don't know if we should expect that yet. Marvel's in a similar position. They've got um, Echo, which is a show about a character who was a spin-off character in, a, in another show that was essentially a spin-off show from another movie. So it's just like, fuck. And then Agatha Harkness' TV show, who was... A witch Who cares about a, Agatha? This is what I mean. Like it's 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 like like oh. I don't care about I I don't know. I'm does anyone care about Agatha? No. No. Anybody like in chat? The actress somewhat, but like no way you get sure. a TV oh, show out of that. Yeah. Who who's you know, I'm not talking about the actress, it's it's like Do we care about the character? No. Why aren't they doing another um what's her face? Scarlet Witch. Uh well she'll be back as far as I'm aware. She's signed on for a bunch more stuff, but not quite yet. You mean like another TV show about her? Yeah, sure. Sorry, uh, I'm just uh, posting our stream on 
Instagram I'm listening yeah, to. The, the, the main appeal I found from her in her TV show was actually the way that they styled it. Like, I don't know if you, you watched it, but, you know, they... I did. Yeah, they went through generations of television, which was really cool. And most people agree, like, yeah, that was, like, the best portion of it. And then they went into, like, your standard Marvel slop by the end, where it's, like, giant lasers and explosions and everyone's flying around. And you're like, oh, man, I was really enjoying, like, the character-focused stuff with a meta of television sort of tropes being laid on top. And in between episodes, they would have ads that were, like, generic and um, almost, like, classic, uh, nostalgic in a way. But they would have little hints, like... Um, Sounds of the Iron Man suit or references to uh, certain people who are really important in her life. And you'd be like, what does that mean? Where is that going? It right. reminds me of TFA where you'd be like, oh, man, this could be this. This could be this. It could mean this. It could mean this. And they're just like, no, she's just crazy. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, uh, Thomas, we're going to get to Super Chats, you know, in a little bit. So everyone send them in and we'll, uh, we'll address them all. But, um, yeah, we're still chatting. Chill yeah, I don't know, man. I, 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 I truly hope that Star Wars is going to be... Because at the end of the day, you know, and, and people have this rhetoric that we want Star Wars to fail. To, why? Oh, no. I don't, I don't think... I, don't I, think I want, want all that. of it to be good. It's such a... You, you get this moment of being like, I love storytelling, man. That's like the, the, the core. Star Wars hey. is one of the branches. So I started a new channel called Theories Tales. I don't know if you saw. I think I saw that you'd mentioned it, yeah. Would you ever do something like that yourself? Like telling stories? Yeah, you just write your own stories and voice them. Um, yeah, uh, but the thing is, I see my life in, I plan ahead significantly. Something that me and Drinker like often have like jokes about back and forth because, you know, he'll come up with an idea for a video, write it in like, and, and record it and release it in the same day. Meanwhile, I'm like, okay, this next six months will be my Ant-Man Quantumania video. And then it, I plan out all the stages and then I try and account for additional things coming in. But at the same time, I've planned ahead for like, I want to analyze a lot more films. I want to go through a lot more that are made by people who aren't considered shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I want to try and break them down with the format that I've developed at this point. And once I feel strong about understanding yeah. what I believe works about stories and what doesn't, you know, and, and that I feel like I've tested the formula pretty well, I'd like to start writing stories, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that'd be great. I think you know stories very well. Um... I would it. love to get together with you and uh, create something. Not for that channel, but just something unique. Maybe oh, yeah. Make our own comic or our own story. I offer it to a lot of the different people I'm uh, familiar with because I don't really do voice acting anymore. I used to about eight years ago-ish. You didn't but, uh, send me anything. Yeah, I did. <laughs> On Discord. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> and to be fair, sorry. it's... Uh, I'm it, sorry. That was that was rushed when I did this, and, and, no, and I said you're going to have I, an audience filled with like talent, so don't worry about it. I I offered as like a favor. I did um, bits of work for Nerdrotic and some other people, like the stuff that they have. But no, dude, if it's good, well, I'm going to listen to it after this. If it's good, I'm oh yeah, of course. You have a good voice, so. Well, yeah, uh, I, I always prefer the, it if uh, you would um, give me lines and then um, what you want to hear. I, I like doing auditions like that instead of just random stuff. Yeah, no, I just wanted to see what people could do right off the bat without telling them too much of the story. But essentially, it's, um, okay, Vader episode, uh, the Vader fan film is essentially, a, uh, the Jedi are not the same that they used to be during the Republic. They're extremely uh, desperate at this point. Mm -hmm. So what you have is after Order 66, Mace went and he found a whole bunch of survivors, Padawans, Knights, and Masters. And he brought them together, and this is kind of like a, a last-ditch effort to... For the Jedi to survive and to continue before they go extinct. You know, he doesn't know about Luke. He doesn't know about Leia. He doesn't know about Yoda having survived or anything like that. Or Obi-Wan. Um, he just knows that Vader is alive. And he suspects that that is most likely Anakin. And that Palpatine is alive. So he g gathers these Jedi who are extremely afraid, extremely now angry... They have nothing more to hold on to because their, you know, their masters have been killed by Anakin. Their Padawans have been killed. Their younglings have been, you know, so it's, it's a really desperate time for them. So their emotions, they're like, this is now when the Jedi are being really, really tested to see how close can they stay in the Jedi philosophy and not cave and not break. And some of them do. Some of them do cave. Some of them do break, especially when they come across Vader and they finally see him in the fan film 
And how is Mace going to kind of not completely divulge into the darkness that is within him already, which is indicative of his purple lightsaber. So these these Jedi, some of them are, are calm and collected, but they have breaking points because Vader knows how to really push buttons really well. Anakin's really good at that. So how are they going to kind of traverse this emotional journey as they have to kill Vader, which is already extremely difficult, but he's now prodding them with emotional baggage and turmoil of what he did to their masters or their Padawans or their knights and how he's just toying with them. And it gets very difficult for Vader, but it also gets extremely difficult for some of the Jedi. So it's not your typical, like, you killed everyone at the temple. Now you will suffer. It's, it's like <laughs> there is extreme, there's extreme emotion. Yeah. Extreme acting, extreme, like, I want some Oscar worthy shit. With, I want people to just let themselves go and, and I want it to really sell because it's we're not so worried about the, the, f the facial movements because it's all animated so we can kind of do what we want. Yeah. But when it comes to the voice, it has to really sell, has to really carry. So, you know, if you can, I haven't listened to yours, but if, if you can kind of go along those lines and I can give you lines too. I'll, I'll give you lines from the film. That's fine. Do that. I'll give it, I'll give it a second go with... Um... Uh, if you give like a just a basic sort of maybe even age history of any kind, it's just yeah. something that can help get into a voice. Well, it would kind of be like, which Jedi do you want to play? Because they're all different. One. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, the the darker one. one. I always prefer. Like, I feel like much more comfortable playing a villainous character. But if uh, if it's a Jedi, then maybe someone who's gray, somewhat. Well, at this point, they're all desperate as fuck. So. Um, some of them are losing their shit. <laughs> there's one that loses, there's one Jedi that loses his absolute shit and kind of fucks it up for everyone. Um, <laughs> All right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that, that role's already taken. Uh, Balin Levine is doing that one. But the rest of them, um, yeah, well, we can talk about it after. Yeah. How do you solve the problem of like a uh, character like Mace Windu, for example? Do you have to find like a Samuel Jackson impersonator sort of thing? Yeah. Tough is uh one of the <laughs> roles I uh tried for but uh, didn't get chosen for like like I said like eight years ago. Someone's doing a fan thing and it was a uh, Dooku lines. Christopher Lee's voice is so fucking hard to do. The the best voices humanity has. It's the best. It's the best voice. Yeah. I used to try to do them for the comics and stuff. I'd <laughs> be like sitting there and be like <laughs> just fucking up each time. It's like a very deep British accent. It's hard to do. What do you want to do? <laughs> That's what I mean. You, you try and it could be it could just be funny because it's like it he pulls ridiculous. it off. Whatever he says anything, it sounds amazing. Because obviously it, it is yeah, it sounds great. Lord of the Rings and like every line from Saruman is fucking incredible. I know. He's badass. He was a cool guy. Oh, he lived but... like one of the best lives in terms of just events, you know? He was so tall and he lived to be so old, which is so rare. Yeah. No, I'm glad he had a really full life. And he got to meet Tolkien as well. That's awesome. He did? Oh, crazy. Yeah, and Tolkien gave him his blessing to play Gandalf. Um, okay. And he was like, I want to play Gandalf. And then Peter Jackson was like, listen, <laughs> like, you know, like, you're more evil. You just, yeah, that's the thing. No one could play Saruman better. That may nope. be Charles dance, but even that would probably just be 50-50, uh, you know? There's a, there's a uh, couple of old is... guys out there who could probably do it. Uh, Nerd of the Rings just messaged me a couple days ago. He said he interviewed the guy who many people are saying could be a good stand-in for Ray Stevenson. Uh, I've heard a couple of suggestions, but I'm not sure which one. Graham McTavish. Oh, yeah. And apparently he asked him in the interview, like, would you play the role of Balin Skull? And he's like, I would love to. So that's at least something. That's I cool. mean, neat. Yeah, I really like him. Um, he was in House of the Dragon, I think, right? I haven't seen House of the Dragon. Wow. You said you I liked know. Game of Thrones, didn't you? When it was good. I love Game of Thrones, yeah, but uh, yeah, I didn't watch it. House of the Dragon season one's good. You'll be okay. Don't worry. A lot of people, because I covered it with uh, specifically because Gary asked me to uh, Nerdrotic. I didn't yep. want to, and I was like, yep. but he was like, I, you know, I'd like a hand reviewing it uh, weekly, and I was like, okay, fine, yeah, I'll do it for you. Yeah, 
<laughs> and uh, <laughs> we watched like one episode, and I'm like, eh. Watched three, and I'm like, okay. And then finally finished the season. I was like, give me another season, please. Was it woke trash? Woke trash. I mean, it, that's the that's the kind of thing that if if Gary says that it's great and recommends it, I, I doubt that it would be considered that. Hmm. There's a particular scene and, and a character in it that uh, a lot of people considered like hyper inspirational. It's uh, all about a dad coming through for his family, sort of thing. It's uh, oh, cool. I wouldn't want to spoil it, but I'd recommend it. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Season two is on the way. Thoughts on the leaked Andor season two trailer? I didn't know there was a leaked one. Personally, I'm hyped. Season one is amazing. More Cyril and his mom. <laughs> 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 um well you know if they know that that's the end of the story like they're going to take it from where we left off to rogue one and i imagine we're going to get a lot of uh, bigger events happening wouldn't be surprised yeah. we get some cameos from uh bigger characters as well but obviously i'm i just want to see what happens to a couple of my favorites from that show in general i just want to see if he's still eating that cereal i don't know if he finished it <laughs> Yeah, I think season two will be, for me, much more entertaining. Just with the level of uh, how far it jumps in time, with the time jumps. Mm -hmm. And then also the characters. I, I really liked Krennic, so I really want to see him return. Yeah, I want to see K2SO again. Like my favorite yep. Disney Star Wars character outside of uh, a people from Andor. <laughs> the really? Rogue One. Yeah. yeah, I said, uh, you know, when the time like Rise of Skywalker would come out, like the most moving death in all of Disney's Star Wars content is the one of a fucking robot. I don't, think, I don't know what to think about that. Yeah, Rick screws and cereal. Yeah, <laughs> I just I'll need a T-shirt with with. I need a T-shirt with uh, fucking the bowl can be a, like a brick, and then nuts and bolts will be the uh, fucking cereal with milk. Oh god, how that turned the one fucking thing. People just take that and. <laughs> It's like, fuck off. That's not even what I meant. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> I won't but, lie. That's, uh, that's happened both both directions for me, where someone will take a line from me, and I'm like, what? That's not what I... And then vice versa, I'll be sent a clip where I'm like, really? That's what they said? Without, you know, realizing? Like, you probably think there's a potential here that you're not hearing what they actually meant. Yeah. Try to be better than that these days. Whenever someone in a super chat says something like, do you know, the person you have respect for said... This really dumb thing. I'm like, oh, I'd have to hear it from them. Uh, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I can't. I can't just. Yeah. Do you get a lot of that too? Like oh yeah, the, the, and you have to be careful with your, you know, sort of engagement with with communities because a lot of them are not there because you're they're your fan. They're there to stoke fumes and and take clips. Yeah. It's um, just like a shit thread of people just shitting on you who hate you. Oh, it's crazy. There's uh, there's people who are like it, I see it in the subreddits sometimes where there'll be people who are posting and they'll they'll do a thing like, um, "Hey, I can't believe this," but like you know, is is this person and this person are they fighting? I don't know. Is this some? And then they post a whole bunch of and it's like, why are you posting all this shit? And it's just like, oh, well, I, I was just, oh, I was just wondering. And then you look at their history and they're just like people who are like, I fucking hate those two. I wish they would both kill themselves. <laughs> and you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> I know, dude. I know it's fucked. I don't get it. I don't really understand it. But whatever. Fuck it. We live in a really weird world. Like uh, a lot of videos lately covering plagiarism on YouTube, right? Like there's a lot of people who make careers from other people's careers. Um, Jack's films covered one where he found someone who's uploading a lot of his stuff onto TikTok where I don't even know that he was on there and he took him down and they sent him a message saying, you've got your bag. Let me get mine. Holy fuck, dude. Just like a matter of whatever, you're not even on this platform. Let me make money from your content. It's like, make your own fucking content. Jeez. Yeah. It's hard to instill that in a lot of people. And this is a really uh, crazy sort of interesting thing, right? Like when I had started out, I just wanted to talk about media and stories because I, I enjoy them and I do think they're important. But the more time goes on, the more I'm like, man, I feel like if we don't have really strong stories about heroic characters doing the right thing, it will like have a ripple effect eventually. A lot of people won't be inspired. People will just be like, eh, fuck it, I could steal stuff. Yeah, I, I've had a lot of that, man, of, especially with my comic videos and stuff. Um, there was a couple channels. There's this one kid in particular that would download my videos um, and then like 
write the script out or get get the captions for it, and he would just reread it in his voice, in his voice, in the same cadence, uh, in the, the same tone that I would read my script. It was with my video that I edited. It was just weird to see that. I'm just like, this is like not even plagiarism. This is just some next level shit. But you kind of just get used to it to a certain point, and then you know, yeah, people uploading your videos on TikTok and this and that. And then there's the, um, but I guess, you know, whatever. It comes with it. You just get it taken down. It's fine. Yeah, there's that. There's also uh, a school of thought that's just like, just let them be. Uh, they don't get as many views and that they are essentially promoting the channel somewhat. Like it's, it, it, it's, it's yeah. a matter of you have to play it carefully in terms of what are you trying to achieve? Because you don't want right. to, you know, take down every lot. There's some people who just share a clip of you that's like a minute long celebratorily and you don't want to be like, oh, hey, yeah. you, fuck off. You know, no, you know, no, no, no. But I mean like, yeah. you know, tons of... Or when someone that goes... uploads an entire video and says highlight, you're like, well... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Or people who have you ever had people who live stream your live streams? Uh, I think so, um, <laughs> but I've never I've never like looked into it. I'm assuming you have, or like oh, they just had it sent to me. I'm just like, oh, that's funny. Yeah. Um, but that you know, everyone here watching, uh, if you guys ever want to upload clips of the streams of the podcasts here, me and Mahler or whoever, feel free. Absolutely, feel free. That's just free marketing for me, and it'll boost your channel or whatever your tiktok so I'm yeah feel free go ahead making highlights and i'm always for it man if you want to do clips of vader episode two vader episode one just link it back to me man just put a star wars theory put a tag star wars theory mall or whatever that's all that's all but yeah go for it i i love that stuff it's just easy marketing get things out there so Will your next step be after a project? Mm, episode three. Yeah. So I preferred, preferably, I'd like to have you around as a Jedi that survives into episode three. Wait, what, me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there's a few. There's a whole shitload that die. Oh, no. <laughs> Dude, he absolutely goes, he's going to do things in this film that nobody's seen. It's... it's I gotta send you the script. So Vader sure guy is a mean one, huh? Well, it's it's Anakin Vader at this point, so he's like he still thinks he can like move like Anakin does, but he he gets all fucked up and like, <laughs> but it just makes him more angry, so he becomes extremely volatile and like does you, these. You like considered because uh, it makes a lot of sense to want to tell the stories for these characters, especially with how invested I imagine you'd be. But have you considered like doing one for Ray to try and make her sort of? endearing and interesting i haven't even thought of it i mean she doesn't inspire a lot of passion you know cool if we could change that people have asked me and drinker before like if you had control of a ray movie what would you do and the first thoughts we both have is just like she's gonna go through a lot of shit we immediately need to make her you know put her, put her through something that's gonna be difficult for her, which is actually difficult to generate because she's uh she's so powerful. You wanna do something together? What for Ray? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know. It's the kind of thing where um you know when someone suggests you like, where do you take the story now, theory, after after episode nine? It's like, do I have to? Can I can I just Yeah. I still uh, want to. You know, even as a thought process, you're like, I'd rather spend my brain cells on something else. Exactly. Um Two of my favorite YouTubers talking about Star Wars made my day. Hello, long man. When Vader Hello. episode two drops, can Mahler do a EFAP on it with Star Wars Theory? He can do an EFAP on it by himself. He can do it with me. Yeah, whatever. I wouldn't mind doing that with you, asking you about how it goes, pausing it as we go. It'd be fun. Yeah, I'm going to do that too, for sure. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm down for people doing reactions, whatever they want. It's all good. I can't make money from it, but um, I don't care if other people do. I've been hearing about uh, no. this, the monologue about Han Solo. I haven't seen it, though. Is it new, or is this old? Let me try and find it. I've seen people talking about it, and I was like, I remember there was one from ages ago, I think. Um, oh, it's a day ago. Oh, what the heck? Jokes he didn't kill Han Solo in SNL monologue, Wokeness killed Han? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know.
Where's the video? I think most people would agree it was Harrison Ford killed Han, but okay. Well, plenty of other things to be angry about at that point. Oh, Jesus, making the rounds everywhere. Oh, the, the video is down everywhere all over YouTube. You can't even find it. Oh, they like striking and stuff. Mm hmm. Oh, wait, no, Diamond Figs uploaded it. Hold on here. Oh, he's playing the piano and he's saying, please, everyone stop coming up to me saying I killed Han Solo. I didn't kill Han Solo. Wokeness killed Han Solo. Well, hope it's fine. I don't know what he means by that. Maybe he's... I don't even think that many people would have made... Like I said, most people talk about Han Solo's death as just a... That's the only way that Harrison Ford was going to do the movie, right? Yeah. Wouldn't surprise me at all if Disney would have rather keep him alive at least for like two movies. It would have been good. It would have been nice. Well, that's the thing. I don't know how you feel about it, but like uh, when I first saw TFA, I quite liked it. But in retrospect, I was like, actually, that movie fucking sucks ass. And that Han Solo is completely like mischaracterized throughout. Dude, I have a video that I made literally right after I went to my car. And it was 2015 before I had the channel. And I, I, <laughs> I was just shitting on it. I was like, yeah. I was like, what <laughs> the fuck is this? This is horrible. This was some like Disney shit. It was like Star Wars. Been... I'm not even done with it yet, but I have a series that will be, I think, something like 12, 13, 14 hours in total, all about TFA. Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> hey, there's already like eight hours of it out. You know, it's oh, fully God. edited. It's, uh, it's like a fucking trip to Japan or something. It's The point of it is to go into just how badly written that script is. It is phenomenally bad, like the amount of things they get wrong. And I've interspliced, I don't know if you ever listened to the commentaries for the um, film by J.J. Abrams. But you know like oh, God, how no. they see the destruction of the um, the Hosnian system? Right. Which is not possible. Like, there's no fucking way physically that they could possibly they, see that. Are they split apart? What do you mean? Oh, no, no. Oh. Oh. They, Finn and Han see it in the sky. <laughs> right. Like this. right. And J.J. Abrams said, yeah, this isn't a, this isn't a science lesson. That was his yeah. response to that. It's like, oh, that's fucking boring. Like, yeah. You know, you figure out anything else. The biggest fucking science fiction movie of all time but you know, and then you have um whatever jd abrams when describing like what he wanted to do with han he said like you know everyone knows han han solo the man with the gun mm. like that's <laughs> you you get a dis you get a sense when listening to jj that like he really didn't care that much about star wars beyond caring about star wars to care about Star. like it it's the thing that a lot of people talk about star wars it's like uh, an Ouroboros is like eating itself, becoming itself, or celebrating itself. It's not actually telling stories, it's like telling Star Wars. Yeah. And he said like the, yeah. the point of the movie was to try and recapture all the feelings of watching the OT. Like, how about like making your own thing though? And not, you know, not your own thing as in you go off script entirely, but your own thing as in an actual story that we go, hey, the sequels, they're awesome, the prequels, they are whatever people think they are. The OT, they are whatever they... Right. They are their things. They're not the thing that celebrated the other thing. Yeah, I don't really understand why uh, why he directed that film. Or, well, I do understand why, but... Uh, it's crazy you know, I remember Star Trek got him that. Yeah, um, yeah I remember when um, episode 9 was about to come out, and I was at Celebration 2019, and Kathy was next to him on stage, and it, you could just literally, like, it was, she was so full of shit. I felt like when she was like, oh, you guys, you have no idea how much he cares about this movie, you guys. It's like, you're full of shit. He doesn't care. He doesn't even know what the hell's going on. Like, you guys didn't even give him any sort of update on anything to do with The Last Jedi. And didn't Ryan have him, like, change the ending or something like that of, of, of Seven? Oh, there's so much. It's the... Uh insane when you like start to dig into it the the thing you come away with of course is that it's all just slapdash all over the place and nobody completely nobody's trying to keep anything in a straight line a lot of people can just argue enough and then they can push the different things to happen something that's interesting oh, right. that you notice is the the legacy characters being han leia and luke they all come in at 40 minute intervals 40 minutes in the han solo comes in it's an hour and 20 that leia comes in and then it's two hours that luke comes in it's very weird it is very weird feels mechanical like why would you do it that way and, and a lot of the reasoning they gave at the time but there's lots of others now is that you gotta give room for everyone to get invested in the new characters 
as if having old characters no. there for the whole movie would make that impossible. No, it, it literally it's the opposite way. You have the new the, the old characters that you focus on, and you have the new characters come in, and you kind of have them as like supporting characters. Yeah, because and then you get used to them. Like we watched the OT, and then came away thinking, man, I don't really care about Chewie or Creepio or R two D two. Care about them no. at all because they weren't the main characters. Like, that works. No, they're stupid. They don't know anything. They know nothing, dude. It, right, so the ending of The Force Awakens was originally supposed to have, and you see this in the concept art, the Luke lifting all of the stones and, like, massive boulders and, like, revolving them around and all this stuff. And Ryan contacted JJ, and he was like, hey, I need you to take that out because I don't want Luke to be able to use the Force. The force anyway. <laughs> well, hey, don't worry. They gave that payoff to Rey in Rise of Skywalker. So. Yeah, great. We read this one. I am well versed in the art of long man and love it. Speaking of Kenobi, have you all noticed Disney's weird hesitancy on using Williams tracks like the Imperial March? Oh, it's probably expensive. Yeah, the I've not fully have you, have you seen breakdowns of uh, the choices they make for soundtrack? They they've been they've had some really weird choices in the sequels. Sideways is a channel that tackled a lot of it. Oh, I haven't seen it. Uh, like putting tracks in places that you're just like, why the fuck would you use like Yoda's theme or Leia's theme in these places? And, and it seems haphazard to the point of just being like, yeah, but we like the song. Like, okay. <laughs> That's so I just enough. plug and play. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> yeah, maybe not the best choice. But you know, that's the thing is what we're facing is people who don't understand Star Wars that are now making Star Wars. Oops. Did Star Wars Theory see the videos Red Letter Media made about Obi-Wan? Some of the worst videos I've seen. They keep saying how the fights in the show are better than the Mustafar battle in Revenge of the Sith. Really? Uh, we I don't covered... watch their content. You would have liked... We, uh, if only we knew each other back then. We did an EFAP episode covering their takes, and I love Red Letter Media, but my god, the their Kenobi coverage was fucking baffling. As you probably are aware, part of their personality is keeping... It that the prequels are awful that's their position that's their foundation whenever it comes up that's the truth and they were talking about having kenobi you know like ah oh, kenobi's got problems yeah but it actually did something for obi-wan's character unlike the prequels it's just like holy sh i you, would uh, love to have them on and uh, debate them that oh, i'd love to I'm talk sure about I... it as well but i don't think you'll ever be able to no lie but uh because they'd get absolutely flamed they said some fucking wild stuff. I can't even remember some of the quotes. Maybe chat does, but there was takes in that video. The uh, me, me and Rags are two of the hosts of um, EFAP. We're very fond of the channel, and we had no fucking clue what they were talking about. <laughs> um, yeah, well, no, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, you're not selling it. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not no, no, no. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend this Star Wars cover. They're, they're goofballs. Like, you should watch their coverage of Best of the Worst. That's when they watch like, seen, really old bad movies and stuff. I've seen some of their stuff. Like, they, they definitely have fun making their content, but it's just, it's a little too sarcastic, a little too. Uh, what's the word when you think you know it all? Is there a word for that? Know it all. A lot of words that cover that, right? <laughs> yeah. A dickhead. <laughs> I don't know. Oh man, yeah. I don't know. Thoughts on Mando season four possibly being a movie instead of being a full season? Um, I think it could be better if it's boiled down and more concise. I don't really have faith in Lucasfilm though. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I have a video coming out on that uh, tomorrow. I truly think that it'll be better as a movie. Thanks, Rossi. If you have Tarkin in any of your future Vader series, Mauler would be perfect for the role. Similar accent and all. He did a one. Oh, yeah. one of his... You really like that. I did. A, um, I was trying to like give an option for dialogue at the beginning of TLJ. I said if Tarkin were there instead of Hux, the kind of back and forth that they would have, uh, Owen and, and Tarkin, and how much more interesting yeah. it would be because Hux is a loser. And um, yeah, I just did a little loser. impression of people like, this sounds a lot like Tarkin. I was like, oh, you too nice. Let's hear it. Um... He's being put on the spot, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this guy put you on the spot. Blame SJ. Um, I don't know. What the fuck? I'm just gonna find Tarkin. Say, line. say some, say some Hux lines. I'm the spy. <laughs> I am the spy. I fucking hate Hux. He's. I, I think I told you. Uh, we were we were having this thing about like which of um, which which of the characters in all of, you know, uh, Star Wars sequels, which which of them is like the most inconsistent? Everyone's picking like Luke, or. 
you know, Kylo and everything. And everyone thought it would fucking be dude. Hux. <laughs> Was it, nobody cared about him, except maybe the actor, which I feel kind of bad for. Uh, yeah. Well, dude, his story in Colin Trevorrow's was sick. It was, it was much more interesting. Yeah, like it, yeah, way better. Well, I, I think the best Hux ever was was TFA. This, uh, I feel like that's mm -hmm. a decent enough foundation to build something on. Yeah. Did you uh, read the Duel of the Fate script? I, got, I read through like a bullet point highlights of what happens in it. Oh, okay, yeah. I went through the whole thing. It was really good. Really, really good. Better than, Much better. Better than Rise of Skywalker, really? Ah, well, you know, that's, that's a close one. It's a tough one. What's up, George? Thank you, George. Mahler and Theory, can you check out my Kenobi fan film? Sure, at some point. What's up, Sajid? The Ray movie rumors is Finn will take on the Skywalker name as well and have two <laughs> kids who are trained to be... Two kids who are trained by Ray and, and be the stars. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's, that's one of those ones you're just like, whatever, man. Okay. Thank you, Darren. Mahler, when will you finish your critique of The Force Awakens? Um, there's no for sure date on stuff like that. I work on it whenever I can, but I've got so many other projects running at the same time that... Oh, the problem is, a new movie will come out, and I'll be like, oh, I really want to talk about that. I'll write up a yeah. script for it. And then I'm like, time to record the script. And then a new movie comes out, I'm like, ooh, I really want to talk about that. I'm writing a script for that. And like, no, no, no. Finish the other one. <laughs> the thing is, it's just uh, when I make like two hour long reviews, yeah, really be selective on where I spend the time. So when you do that, like you just, do you have a script or you just go? You just record and go? It's uh, all scripted. It's heavily scripted, hyper oh, redrafted. Geez. All the points are very, very specific. A lot of them will be setups for other payoffs. A lot of them are like, you know, me trying to. Um, I, I do a, a redraft oftentimes to try and inject a lot of humor. I don't want to be too dry. Wow, that's interesting. If ever you watch one of these videos, you'll be probably surprised in terms of just they're absurd, like in, uh, in terms of production. Um, just for the, the amount of time it would obviously take to make them. That's, uh, I, I bet. enjoy it. I bet, dude. My whole kind of thing. You know, so you said you were very planned out here on, the ch on your channel. I, dude, I haven't planned a video, I think, ever. <laughs> there you go. I've been on the fly. Yeah, everyone for almost uh, eight years. Real different. Yeah, I know. I'd be so much more successful if I planned stuff out, but I don't know. I just I don't. I don't know. Hey, it's worked. <laughs> yeah. You know, but um, I'd probably be much more time efficient if I actually planned things out properly really and odd then... for me because like drink will recommend that i be a bit more spontaneous and get things out faster in terms of you know maybe don't script one time maybe just try and review a film off the top of your head and stuff and simultaneously i do stream a ridiculous amount and i do talk about all the films i see recently you know so like in a sense yeah. i am doing that but also not. it's like maybe the worst of both worlds for some fans hmm. well seems like people like your content so i'm what right yeah. Yo, chat, if you guys can hit the like button, that would really help the stream. Push it out. YouTube likes. Likes. The more likes it has on a video, and the more it pushes it out. In my opinion, Ray would have been the daughter of Luke and Mara. Uh, no. I think... Huh. I think Ray's just a false start. She sounds like an idea that was, uh, you know, Luke but a girl, and then we can't let her have any particular personality or traits, which is a really bad way to begin the foundations of a story. You should instead be thinking, like, what kind of character would be really interesting to have in the world as it is right now. Which you can obviously make Ray. Uh, so. How about... You know how Plagueis and Palpatine... Did you read the Plagueis book? You didn't, right? No. No. So in there, you know the whole story about how Anakin was created? Yeah, through the Force, right? Yeah, through the Force, because Palpatine and Plagueis tried to manipulate the Force to create the perfect evil entity. And so the Force was like, nah, so we're just going to make this kid. And so they made Shmi pregnant, according to the book. Right. And um, what if now, in turn, the inverse happened, but they created like the perfect, the Force actually created like the perfect evil entity? Because it had already created Anakin. 
That would have been kind of cool. Yeah, it'd be fun to play with. It'd be like the chosen one that's the <clears throat> dark side, but f fully evil. Because like people don't understand when Vader still turned into Vader, George has said that, that was he's still the chosen one. Yeah, that's his path. So, um, but I, you know, to be honest, I really liked the idea of Finn being a force sensitive who was captured by Kylo Ren or whoever and then mind wiped and just kept there for whatever reason and then eventually comes out of it and then finds his way back to Luke. I mean, it's, there's so much to reveal there that you can definitely pick yeah. a lot, you know? Yeah. Inia Mahler, were your thoughts on the future of Star Wars? Our dream is George back and Dave leading it. We love the content. Much love to all fans. Um, hey, what's going on? Uh, I would say thoughts on future Star Wars. I mean, it's not, uh, you know, I can only go on based on what we've had for what we might get, and it's not looking great. But, uh, you know, the more desperate Disney get, be it with Star Wars or the MCU, you hope that they pass the IP out to some more people that maybe they wouldn't normally, and then some will get lucky and will hit someone who knows what they're doing. Right. Kind of... I don't believe George will, you know, be coming back. Star Wars. No, I don't think so at all. I mean, the very limited access that he does have to Star Wars is probably from Dave saying, hey, look at this new project I have or something, or hey, why don't you come to set? And maybe he'll give his points and we'll kind of see them emphasized through Dave Filoni. But beyond that, no, sadly. They're going to eventually either run it into the ground or they're going to hurt so much financially that they're going to be like, well, maybe it's time to change and we need to take a different approach to this. Yeah. So, you know, there's two different ways or they get bought. I don't see that happening really, but... What do you think of the new Star Wars game coming in March? Um, which one is this? Out, out, Outlaws? I don't even know anything about it. It says a lot. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not really the most exciting game, I don't think. <clears throat> Where do they go with Thrawn now that he's a blithering idiot? I've been reading the Thrawn books and he's so much better in them. Uh, I really don't know where they're going to go with Thrawn. They kind of made him into what, not exactly, but along the lines of how they regressed Thor. Yeah. Into this fat, bumbling idiot who's kind of just lost his way and his hope. Yeah, we'd be in trouble for that because I'm assuming the next time we've seen Thrawn, it will be Dave Filoni written. It's got a lot of what Dave Filoni believes Thrawn should be, which is not what I think the fans would like Thrawn to be. Well, hopefully they consult with Timothy Zone quite a bit. Yeah. But, you know, even consulting with them, what does that mean, right? I mean, if they don't listen. Yeah. So happy to see you back with a Monday Night Star Wars Theory stream. Loving your new form of content and wishing you the best moving forward. Hey, thanks, Jeremiah. That's a really nice message. Thank you, dude. Appreciate that. Yeah, we... Uh, I want to get back onto regular Monday streams. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> Is, are, you, are you open? Are you open to this? I've, 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 like I was saying to you, I would prefer to test it <laughs> <As> he <out>. stutters. <laughs> this is the problem. I, uh, the, all the chat got to light up about this. I was on FNT recently and one of the comments was like you know we kind of need to have Muller as a host of this the fact is he's host of all the six podcasts though so probably not like a smart decision i was like yeah i can't i can't um i can't keep doing this it's getting ridiculous like the amount of podcasts i'm a part of because i enjoy them all i love talking yeah. love yeah. meeting new people and uh you know just just talking media it's, it's always really fun but this is why i'm like apprehensive about it because i don't want to screw you over i don't want to be like oh yeah i'll do it and then just randomly be like oh disappear. this monday i'd rather yeah. not you know and it, well so. no i'm fine with that i'm really flexible with that i'm like yeah hey, you know what some mondays i'm just i'm busy i got stuff going on well or we could always like do it at like midnight my time i mean there's a couple of whatever. ideas you could run for the channel right i assume that something that's come to your head maybe is like rotating a bit like you know next week could be a new guest next week perhaps so that could be those guys that are had on yeah, no, but, no I, yeah, I love those guys, but I, I really like to have a consistent guy that I go back and forth with every week. So, you know, I think the streams here wouldn't be very, the FNT is like seven hours sometimes. So I, these streams would maybe be like two, three. I think, I don't want to, I'm going to have this conversation know, in front of I'm the, putting the, you the on audience because the, the they're all going to be like, <gasps> but if, if I, would, I would probably be able to commit to two hours. 
Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, why don't you commit to like one or two hours and you hop off whenever you want, even half an hour, and then I'll take the show from there. Well, because I was actually going to bring up to I meant to do it before we started, but I probably can only do two hours today because I got to get back to the Lord of the Rings stuff if possible. Yeah, that works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When Star Wars is slow, these streams kind of only go for like two hours anyways. Gary's in chat, by the way. I will say it's funny <laughs> describing FNT as it could go on for as much as seven okay. hours. <laughs> He's trying to get it down, okay? <laughs> uh, four hours, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, These used to be, sometimes these would be like six, seven hours, but that was only a few times But uh, when a Star Wars show was out. But I feel like now it's just, you know, a couple hours and that's it. It's good enough. But yeah, chat, you know, spam one if you want to see Mahler here every week. <laughs> Bam two if you don't. Let's get some uh, let's get some negatives in there. Yeah, yeah we'll see what they You say. know, if there's enough twos, I guess it's just not meant to be, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. I oh, saw well. three. I'm not even sure what that means. <laughs> That's Gary. <laughs> Gary's going to be the new host. Ask Mahler why Seer looks like a crackhead. Who's Seer? Seer Junda. Uh, from you know uh, Seer Junda? No, from Fallen know. Order, the the yeah. See, this is the thing. The more I talk to you, the more I'm probably gonna end up playing those games and fucking watching Tales of the Jedi and stuff like that, which is okay, by the way. Good. This is what happens when I have Good. people influence my life because, like, everyone I've seen it in chat several times already. It's like, have you seen it yet? It's like, no. <laughs> but like, dude, yeah, just give it a shot. Ignore the Ahsoka episodes, but you can always just go for the Dooku ones. Those ones are really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you gotta watch Clone Wars. But what if I think it's terrible? We can do that. Then you think then you think it's terrible and you have another thing to rip apart. <laughs> <laughs> no way I'm gonna be able to do a whole set of videos on top of that as well. You do know. a season. Each season. Each season of the Clone Wars. Dissected, long form. I still think Done. we could do that. Like I'll watch one you, for every week fine. and we'll talk about it for yeah. just like ten minutes. That one yeah. episode. I'm and down. It's a Jar Jar episode where he's just like falling over. <laughs> there are Jar Jar episodes where he finds like his love. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why? Oh, I should have seen it before. Obviously, that's uh, I am yeah. sold. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good, dude. It's. I think, I think you'll like it. Some of the episodes, I didn't like all of them, but you got every stuff in there I'd like. But yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm a sequel fan. I would love to talk with you guys. Much love, theory. You're you're too you're too respectful. We need someone who's. <laughs> We need someone who's an asshole. <laughs> we want good clips. <laughs> uh, Elon told Bob Iger, go F yourself. Josh told Marvel, man, the F up. Now it's theory's turn to tell Star Wars something to complete the trifecta. I feel like I've been doing that for a long time, so yeah. I don't really need to follow suit. I feel like I've been doing that for many years, but... Yeah, a lot of things you could. See. If you had the chance to be face to face, I guess. Jesus, God, I should have read that. Uh, I'm currently listening to the audio of Heir to the Empire, and unfortunately, to me, the whole trilogy is way more of a slog than I remember. Cool concepts, but frankly, it's dry. I'm really bummed. Heir to the Empire is good, but but my God, the Wookiee scenes just made me want to freaking <laughs> put a pencil into my ears. Oh no, <laughs> what happens in them? Oh, God, you didn't listen to the audiobook? No, no. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's when Leia goes to Kashyyyk, uh, and, and she's also, she's with the Wookiee. I forgot his name. She's like with the general. Um, the whole time, the narrator is, is it Mark Thompson? Who is it? Uh, anyways, he's, any line that is from a Wookiee, he's like, <laughs> he wanted you to go to the store, and then from there, he told you to use the force. Literally, for like 10 minutes, it'll just be lines of this Wookiee, and I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> I want to be in like, I, the room with him when he's doing it, and you just sort of look up at him when he's finished, and be like, okay, that's I fine. <laughs> fucking Keep listen going. to this. Please, I just, sometimes I just fast forwarded. I was like, no, I can't do this. This is horrible. I just can't. And it was, it made the whole thing intolerable. I was just like, oh, <laughs> listen to some music or something. But otherwise, no, it was fine. Beyond that, it was okay. <sighs> yeah, 
else out of that time. Do you prefer Sebastian Shaw, Hayden Christensen's Anakin's Force Ghost, or both? Uh, both is fine, but I think Hayden Christensen, simply because that reverts him back to um, his pure form before he turned. My daughter, 12 at the time, stopped watching all Star Wars after The Last Jedi. What they did to Luke, she wouldn't talk about it from it. Yeah. No, I know, I know a lot of younger people that just got into Star Wars and they watched the sequel trilogy and they're like, we'll nah, say, yeah, I'm not feeling it. I think people would be inclined to be like, oh, come on, she's that young. You'd be like, dude, when I watched Alien 3, when I was yeah. like 10, yeah. like you killed Hicks and Newt, fuck this movie. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you know, being that young, you could still get really offended by storytelling choices. For sure. Absolutely. I mean, I watched Star Wars when I was six. You know, it's, I fell in love with it, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, that probably would be exactly who we would need. <laughs> yeah. Uh, surprised to see you two found middle ground after Mahler doing an hour-long video dissecting theory on EFAB. Now it's the rest of the fans. Did if the rest of the fans did that. And we covered your um, that was his dad video. Or I forget the name of it, but you were talking about like how everything's going. Oh, a while ago, yeah, a while ago. Because people obviously wanted us to check it out when they were like, "Look, theory is like, you know, <laughs> for lack of better terms." Because you know how fucking hyperbolic everyone is. And be like, he's not shilling anymore. He's like angry, and it was like, "Oh shit, oh, god, yeah, shilling, yeah, right." I think I've ever shilled. Thing. I've been I've been labeled as someone who shills for Andor, right? It's like it's, that's just the language of the internet. It's I guess. just the language, yeah. I know, I know, I know. It's just funny. Yeah, no, I don't. Whatever. Mahler is free to say what he wants to say, but at the end of the day, when we come together and we become friends, we become friends. So I I don't care. I mean, I've said on so many streams, I way prefer building bridges, and that we invite people all the time to EFAP who are just like, "No, you're disgusting, horrible people. We're not coming to you." And it's like, okay, man. Yeah. Right along. Yeah. No, I don't care. And also, you know, it's the internet, man. So many people have a preconceived notion of me based on their perception. Um, but I think, you know, there there is a complete difference between perception and the reality of someone. And, um, you know, that's you don't really get to know that until you talk to me, right? So. Yeah, and it usually goes the same for everybody. But like, I'm sure you've still seen videos of people. You're just like, oh, they seem insane. And you're like. It could still be yeah. normal, though. They could be, yeah. It could all be, be an act or whatever. But, you know, perception and perspective are two totally different things. So, yeah. Um, with Star Wars in the state that it is, where do we go from here? Do we just invest in other contents, just anime? I mean, you could, but you could always just keep investing in one to six. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, everyone's got room for more media, one IP. So, mm -hmm. plenty of options open. Unfortunately, you can't rely on Disney to keep you know, entertaining you with a Star Wars flavored story. Right. So, theory, you're not going to watch Tales of the Jedi, Bad Batch season three, and Andor season two? Well, of course I will. And I'll be watching all the new Star Wars content, but I won't be talking about new stuff as much as I used to. I'm going to focus much more on the first six films and um, kind of like behind the scenes crap. Lion says, yo, Theory, I got your new saber. Thank you, dude. I was just wondering if there's any way to know what number out of 50 that I got before it arrives. Thank you. May the force be with you. What number do you want? Um, I can check with Kyberphonic before he ships it out, but no promises. But if you let me know what number you want, maybe I can make something happen. But it's typically first come, first serve. So if you order early, then, you know, that's the number you're going to get. What's up, Matic? <clears throat> Did you see Adam Driver SNL monologue about, yeah, right. We saw that. I like The Last Jedi in theory. It is possible. We've got some regular guests on EFAP who love DLJ, and that's okay. <laughs> we haven't even jailed them. Season 2 trailer is leaked two months ago on YouTube? Really? Yeah, I think I remember seeing it. It was like whatever convention they were at. Uh, it was like a sneak preview thing, which is a couple of shots I didn't recognize from season 1, so... Oh, interesting. But didn't it's still that. like miles <clears throat> away from complete. Did you see the Acolyte trailer? That leaked? Yes. I'm not hype. Keep an eye and hope for the best. 
yeah, the, the premise from the leak seems interesting, but I really don't have much faith in uh, Headland after her I I interesting remarks. Todd says, well, poop, your Mace Windu sounds an awful lot like my Mace Windu in an Obi-Wan novel I'm writing. Oh, well, hello there. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what? Usually. <laughs> what is that? What is that? It's one of my like thousand nicknames. I uh, just pronounced my oh. name wrong, and then it ends up being a name people actually use. Fine with me. How do you get from Mahler to Mubsley? Uh Several months of mispronunciation. Oh, telephone tagging. Uh, they should use CGI and archive footage of Christopher Lee as Count Dooku in a future Star Wars installment. Huge fan of doing that. We we easily end up in the Flash territory. I don't know if you saw that movie. I didn't, Ooh. I didn't, I didn't. <clears throat> just all these zombie people running around and all their clips from their famous moments playing, you're just like, put it away. Oh, Jesus. What's up, Gregory? Thanks for the big super chat. Theory of long, long theory. Stars, men, long logic. War against theoretical storytelling. Star Grift. <laughs> the Star Grift show. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I love that. Theory man, founder of... Theory, Mubshul, theorist of nitpicking, Long Phillips head versus the Masonry Squares theorem. I like Star Grift. Star Grift is funny. That's awesome. If if we dedicate Mondays to this to uh, Star Grift <laughs> to Star, I think Star Grift would be pretty fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, it'd be badass. Uh, yeah. Two of my favorite YouTubers talking about Star Wars made my day. Hello, long man. When Vader 2 drops, can Mahler do EFAP? Yes. You'll be man again. Star Wars and Mahler. Have you ever seen Kung Fu Hustle? Amazing action comedy that has a lot of old school martial arts masters on it. A long oh, yeah. time ago. Yeah, Hello, when I was a kid, ago. I think. Yeah. Old one, right? You're 30? Yeah. Are you ever going to show your face? I already have. I uh, used to when I stream games on Twitch in like 2015, 16, but I've always preferred this because uh, oh. I get to do whatever I want sort of thing. You know, oh. I don't, I'm not like you. I don't have to worry about looking hands. Just <laughs> lay down or butted. Yeah, well, I, I, I tend to do that while showing my face. So, <laughs> <laughs> Did you all know that Nine Num got Akbard in The Rise of Skywalker? I saw it on Wikipedia. He gets blown up by Palps lightning alongside some yeah. other randos. I assume you what? knew that. Yeah, he's in one of the ships and he just dies. Uh, Nobody gave a shit. Nice, dude. It reminds me of, uh, and I assume you know about this, right? Like the whole Admiral Akbar stuff where they yeah. film his death scene and then nobody gave a shit. They were like, bye. And he's like, okay. Wait, um, they filmed his death scene? You know, like the scene where they get blown out. Where of he dies. Arm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. and you compare it to the stories about how in Lord of the Rings when they film their final scenes for any individual character of the fellowship. Like everyone's in tears, basically, because it was like a really long, passionate process, and they know that, that that's it. Once you, once you film, you go home, and you probably won't see them, at least not that commonly, again. And they, like, hug, and they celebrate, get maybe even a cake or, like, gifts and stuff. They take a prop home. All this, like, special shit. And then in, in fucking TLJ, they're like, oh, Admiral Akbar, does anyone even know who that is? Bye. <laughs> it's like... Jeez, Fuck, dude. And did you see what the actor actually was saying? The voice yeah. actor was saying, you know, oh, God. That and then he got, like, <laughs> shut down on his fucking... Yep. On his, he was like, oh! oh, oh. <laughs> Basic respect, but uh, asking too much. Literally. Literally is... Yeah, well, whatever. They, that's the problem, though. That's why people don't respect Disney Star Wars is because they don't respect Star Wars. It's plainly put, in the way they write the stories. You know, it's it's almost criminal what they do because it's these characters are so freaking important to so many people, especially people who don't have much to grasp onto. So it's like these characters are a beacon of hope. It's like a religious sort of thing for them, especially Luke. Yeah. And when you turn Luke into a, a <laughs> literally the everyday man who's lost hope, it's like, oh God, cool. It's Fuck. okay though, because he came back and then died something. You know, when that happened, I, I was arguing with people about whether or not he'd even died. A lot of people who are TLJ fans are like, he didn't die. You just like became one with the force. You'll be back. Yeah, that's what I thought too. I'm like, you know what, you guys? That was one of my theories actually. Is that he became so powerful that he can now go in between the yeah. in the force and come back. This is so why, he's just on a journey. 
that's how I felt about like the whole film. Everybody was so desperate to make it work because Ryan had fucked everything up. It's like yeah, it's, it's got to be this, shit. right? It has to be this. Has to be this. Has to be this. All these, and then you watch the next one. You're like, holy shit! What the hell? That wig they gave Luke in Rise of Skywalker as well. Oh God! What the hell, man? <laughs> But the Dave Filoni movie, I think, will be like the first sequel trilogy. In what way? Well, it's the first thing after episode six. Right, right. Well, we'll see. Um, like Luke. I said, you have a lot more faith in him than I do. Yeah. I do. We'll see what happens. When The Force Awakens came out, I loved the theory that Han killed himself with Kylo's saber so that Kylo wouldn't completely go to the dark side. Uh, I'm welcoming oh. everyone's opinions, but I hate that. Han <laughs> Solo killed himself. I never even thought of that. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure he didn't try to do that, but... I mean, he looked kind of surprised. He did, yeah. <laughs> The factions I despise the most in the Star Wars fandom are the Andor simps, EU purists, KKRJ apologists, and the fandom menacers. What are both of yours? Um, anybody who's just intolerable of someone else's opinions. That's that's. <clears throat> yeah, they that can gives come me the from ick. Any sort of faction is the ones that are like way too narrow-minded, I guess. You know, there's, you try and say there's things to appreciate <laughs> about every uh, era of Star Wars a, somewhat. A larger aspect of the Force. But there's also some stuff we just... Hmm. And yeah, you get a lot of angry people. I've, I I know that Andal people can be annoying, EU people can be annoying, sequel people... Are, uh... Prequel people, anybody can be annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're annoying, you're annoying. Yep. <laughs> Simple as that. Dave being higher up will kill Star Wars forever. Okay, well, what's the alternative? Uh, is that a good sort of response to that, though? Well, no, but it's like, in reality, what is our alternative? If there were one, would you then concede this to be true? Possibly, depending on the alternative. Yeah, for sure. Because, you know, a couple people suggest... Sam Witwer. Other people suggest a combination. Him and some other people. Dude, Maybe even new blood. Yeah. Would Sam you Whitwer. ever want to be in a position where you take a gamble on a random creator instead of Dave Filoni? Well, I feel like we've done that with so many of the projects. That's true. We, uh, we've we rolled Snake Eyes on a, on a couple, unfortunately. Um, Is there anyone that you like besides Tony Gilroy? So... Obviously, I despise JJ and Ryan. I think they annihilated Star Wars. Yes. I guess KK will be connected to that. Who else we got? Talking about like the directors John? and writers. Of John Fat. Mm. What do you think about him? His best work, I adore. His worst work, I fucking hate. And um, mm. I think the Mandalorian has been like driven into the ground. Like he's he's the I don't know what plans they had for him, but they seem to be gone. And I think that a lot of people talk about the Mandalorian as a show for what they wanted, but not what it is. What right. we all wanted was the bounty hunter making his way and doing his missions and stuff, but I don't right. think we really got that. We got like one or two episodes maybe throughout the three. Yeah. That's including fucking Book of Boba Fett. But then, yeah, so if you're talking about individual writers or directors that have worked on it outside of the big ones, um, you know, like a, even like Robert Rodriguez and stuff, is like, I don't know mm. who I would hand it to right now, but Tony Gilroy probably would be the main one. Bryce Dallas Howard? Wasn't she the one behind Mando season one, episode four? That's like the first episode that I thought was terrible. Where he falls in love with that random lady and they can't defeat an ATST even though they have a spaceship. Was that her? Pretty sure Bryce Dallas Howard did that episode, yeah. Oh. So, Probably you know, biased because I think she's so attractive. She's attractive, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blinded. <laughs> uh, uh, have you ever seen the anti-trilogy YouTube video? Theory loves it. Oh yeah, that one. What is it? What is it? It's really good. Anti-sequel trilogy. Is it positive about the sequel trilogy? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> it, Crazy. It, it rips it apart. Yeah, it was pretty good. 
You know, I have to pull up. I'm about to watch the Gaunts game. Ga Giants? <laughs> Just got home. I asked Theory and Josh this question in the past. Mahler, what is your perfect sandwich, meaning your deli order? Mm. Perfect sandwich? Uh, I'm a big fan of chicken. But kinds. A lot of kinds. Uh, get some, get something spicy in there. You know, again, I'm not too picky about the form. A lot of them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a nice, nice, nice bit of salad as well, of some kind. Oh yeah, yeah. lettuce, okay. uh, maybe tomato. At that point, um, that's like the general. But you know, you, you can go crazy in some directions. You want spice things up, like I said, in a way that's not related to spice, I guess. Uh, but I've I've never thought to answer the question of what my perfect sandwich is. So yeah, me neither. Right now, I'd say I'd be feeling a, give me like a baguette. You take some of the, the dough out, put in some chicken with some pesto, cheese, lettuce, tomato, salt. Sure. Yeah, sure. Sounds good. What's the purpose of life, genuinely asking? Uh, we could probably uh, get on that on Theory Talks episode, but... I think just fart around until you die. I, don't know. <laughs> I was going to say, what do you think is the most meaningful but shortest answer you could give to that? Yes. Self love, I suppose. Self love. Find and, meaning. Yeah, self love, and through self love, you you find love in others, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Good Star Wars, you know. Cancel Disney Plus. Are auditions still open? Yes, they're open for a few more months. There's a story out there that Finn was going to be a Jedi in Rise, Green Saber, and that's why he was hyping the film up, but it was entirely removed in the cut. I don't think so. I don't think that would have ever happened. Highly doubt it. Great seeing y'all do these streams. Welcome, Mahler. Enjoying my dinner at local brewery. We'll watch the rest of this later. Much love. Much love, Ivan. Have a good dinner. Thrawn's not evil. Read the new Tron, Thrawn trilogy. Filoni needs to work with Zahn or I'm out. There's just another aspect that sucks about Thrawn is he's not just incompetent. He seems kind of like shit in terms of yeah, the basic just... character set of traits. <laughs> you know, yeah, like like someone that I don't really care about whether or not he's intelligent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen and understand, KK's story group is out there. They can't be bargained with. They can't be reasoned with. <laughs> They don't feel pity or remorse <laughs> or fear, and they absolutely will not stop ever until Star Wars is dead. Kylo Reese. Yeah, well, they have their whiteboard, so, you know. Yeah, all the fucking answers. Sir Halligad. Thank you, Sir Halligad. Almost a year membership. I want Mahler to watch the droid small general arc and eviscerate those episodes. Those were the worst episodes in Clone Wars. What do you think is it true? I don't remember them. Oh, well. <laughs> it's probably not a good start, is it? Yeah, I don't remember those. I mean, there's some episodes in there where you're just like, all right, I can skip this one. I've, I've heard people say that. Like, we can provide a list, and that's typically not how I do TV shows. Like, uh, skipping. Well, Disney Plus does a list, which is pretty funny. Mm -hmm. Of, like, important episodes to watch or something like that. But, I don't know. My two favorite YouTubers together is always a good time. Thoughts on the current Vader comic since 2020. What they tried to do with the Handmaidens and Vader could have been interesting. I stopped reading them. I felt like they were just becoming a little too silly, but I can go back if you so wish. Is that One Punch Man? I haven't seen it. I want to see it. <laughs> Thrawn Trilogy has good moments and provides good foundation for post-Return of the Jedi Legends. It has long moments, slog moments that would not translate well for adaptation. As long as they don't have Wookiees talking, I, you know, I think I'm fine with it. <laughs> Wookiee racism going on here? No, just the the guy who was impersonating him. That was whoever the director was for that. I mean, that destroyed the book. Mahler needs to show his face. Bad branding. What about a mask or something? I've gone this far, haven't I? True. Would you ever show your face again? Uh, if, I, if it was like a need to, or like a meetup, I, I would necessitate it, but I just, um, 
you know, because like the way EFAP works is none of the guests or hosts ever show their face. Like we do it through Discord and no cams. So. In a sense, like it's it's the the format of the podcast, and that's like the primary thing I do on my day to day. And then my videos, I don't see the point in putting my face there because I want to put visuals there to prove my points. And so at that point, I'm pretty much just I just don't need to. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, by the way, chat, everyone watching right now, if you want to go grab my merch, I have a one day ten percent off code. It's Nerf Herder, and that'll run through midnight tonight. I skipped this one. Everyone talks up Heir to the Empire, but I think the second book, Dark Wars Rising, is the real goat. Mahler, if you want super well-written Luke, read the Thrawn trilogy. I'm sure it'd be like a Breath of Fresh Air compared You know the... F you didn't read it? No, no, I haven't read any. Like, uh, oh. This is the thing. I'm primarily a movie guy, and then I love yeah. Star Wars. So right. I've seen all the Star Wars films like a billion times over, and then... Yeah, yeah. kept track of the TV shows, but not even all the TV shows, right? Like, uh, yeah, and it kind of goes the same for a lot of IPs I follow. But, um, yeah, you know, a lot enough. of people have recommended to you, and then as I've talked to you about, I played a couple of the games, like, I don't know, five or six. Oh, the one I picked up recently, I didn't even mm. know this existed. Have you heard of this? The Heritage Pack on Nintendo Switch for Star Wars, isn't that all the, all the old games? Yeah, I didn't, I thought it was like a meme or something that someone had made. And, just like, wouldn't it be fun if we had this? But it actually exists, and I bought it because I was like, fuck yeah. Gotta get all that. And I play yeah. Switch every once in a while. But yeah, you get um, KOTOR 1 and 2, Jedi Academy uh, 1 and 2, then Force Unleashed, Republic Commando, Star Wars Races, all of that in one game. Pretty cool. I want to go back and play Shadows of the Empire again. Well, yeah. I suppose you can. You ever played that one? No. No, no. Uh... Oh, I the main ones one. I played were Battlefront 1 and 2, Bounty Hunter. I think, uh, yeah. what were the X-Wing games where you like primarily played an X-Wing? X-Wing, Starfighter. I think it might, yeah. Would have been. But the, the ones that my fans are like, infinitely annoyed about is I didn't play the KOTOR games. Which they... Yeah, I played the shit out of the first one. I didn't finish it when I was a kid. And then I tried playing it again, and then I... It just keeps crapping out, and then all my data got wiped. Nice. Not play KOTOR 2 on Switch. It doesn't have the TSLRCM mod. For sure. <laughs> that's, a, that's part of the problem, is that people be like, oh, you gotta play it this way, this way, and I was like, oh. So many games I want to play. character from the original six movies to do a movie on, who would it be? Dooku for me. <laughs> But wait, perfect scenario is we get to actually have the uh, the actor, right? The actor? Yeah. Uh, Palpatine. Young Palpatine. I like we both went with bad guys. I know. They're more interesting. <laughs> what do you think they will do with Reva? She can't get away with knowing about Luke and Anakin being Vader. She literally got stabbed twice. I think we can just ignore her. Did, is there any word officially on if she's alive? No. Do that on purpose, don't of course. Yeah. I love how people just don't believe at all that Cad Bane is dead. It's like, nobody's going to believe you, Disney. You could chop his head off and no one would believe you. <laughs> yeah, he's not dead, dude. He's, he's very much alive. Very much alive. Saber 10, 23, 34 would be dope. If not, all good. Let me see how, like, what number you actually got. Let me message. <clears throat> Saber 66, a special one. Um, no, there, because there was only 50. Ah. Okay, hold on here. Uh, before I forget. Well, uh, let me just take a picture of it, and then that way I can remember. Okay, cool. I'll get that taken care of for you, Landon. I'll, I'll see uh, what I can do. I'd tune into Stargrift Mondays. I'm telling you, that's going to be the name of our show now. <laughs> To be so. completely honest, it's like I don't know if I don't know if I heard a better name than that one. That one That's great. Star hey. Grift Mondays. Um You good for next Monday? For like an hour? Sure, I'll try and do two. 
Okay. Is this does this time work for you? Three o'clock. <laughs> my my time. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, it's uh. Is that too late? It's around about eleven p.m. for me, which is not currently too late. So, what time do you normally sleep? That's a really great question. I don't actually have I an sleep answer around for you. five. There's no really convenient time for me to set uh, any particular podcasting. It's just a matter of me moving. There's a meme that I don't sleep at all, which is half true. You're a fucking vampire. A little bit. Stargrift Mondays. Yeah, I gotta make a. I gotta get my guy to make a logo for it and like an intro and everything. What's <laughs> 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 up, sci-fi Star guy? Gr the Stargrift Monday Show. You guys down for that? Stargrift Mondays. Hey, maybe we, maybe we got a new show now. We got to hold Mahler to it. And if he doesn't, we cancel him. Yeah, now you're gonna guilt me and be like, oh, you want to kill Stargrift, do you? Yeah, exactly. There we go. That's how you got him. What's up, Theory? I ordered the Order 66 Black Friday hood. Do you know when they will ship out? Also, will there be Vader's fist in episode two? Yeah. He takes his fist and he jams it right <laughs> up the fucking <laughs> That's what you meant by we're going to see things we've never seen before. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's this it's power. <laughs> uh, the mechanical. Well, I guess they're both mechanical, but um, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, they should ship out, Jan you'll have it January or February, depending when you ordered. Yeah. Thanks for grabbing one, Lucas. We're now going to be working on uh, varsity jackets, but that's for next fall. So we'll probably have that going up in the summer. It's going to be like full of patches and it's going to be, it's going to look sick. Uh, a lot of work though. Do you think Mike Flanagan would be a good choice for a Star Wars project, especially if it were a horror movie? Yes, only if Rahul Kohli is in it. If it were him, I probably want him on something small scale. Yeah. Build it out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I like Flanagan's work. I like Rahul as well. Surely Reva has to die if they make OB season two. <laughs> she should have died a long time ago. <laughs> she shouldn't have been alive in the first place. Ah, thank you, Satan's... F oh, fuck. You guys are two of my favorite voices <laughs> to fall asleep to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh there are so many true fans who could write better Star Wars than Filoni Theory, for instance, Joss, Nolan, or New Blood directing could be great. Well, Joss is never gonna work again. Nolan's not gonna touch Star Wars ten foot pole. And then yeah, at that point, like I said, I, I'm on board with random creators at this point, just trying oh, to Oh Jesus. Get some new blood. Star Wars needs it. Uh, what's Drinker up to? Is he gonna come next week as well? I mean, if, if you invite him, or <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's your guy. He's, he's, he's not my guy. He's his guy. And that's the thing. He's a he's okay, a busy anyway. guy. But yeah. yeah, if you if you invite, him, he'd probably come. If he's uh... gravestone, here lies Star Wars, 1977, 2015, murdered by Kathleen Kennedy. I think 2012. Remember for remember for 20 months. What's up, Julian? Would you decanonize the sequel trilogy? Yeah, that shit's gone. Yes. Bye bye. I used to say no, but you know what? Sequel fans are just so lovely to me that I... I... <laughs> That's why you decanonized it? <laughs> <laughs> I used to say, no, there's people who like it. There's, there's a lot of people who really like the sequel trilogy. I wouldn't want to do that to them, but you know what? They're such assholes to me. And just, would, you, I... would you compromise and say it's a different timeline? No, at this point, the, no, no, fuck them. No, no, no. I mean, I, so if, if I had rude. absolute control, I would definitely decanonize it. No, that shit gets wiped. It never happened. Okay. Luke wakes up from a, a bad dream and he's like, oh God, thank you. You don't even have to do that. Decanonize. Out it goes. Yeah. No no yeah. bad dream even. <laughs> like it's yeah. all gone. Yeah, I guess. Right. Uh, you know, if they were nice to me, I'd stick with my old rhetoric of, uh, yeah, no, there's people who like it, but no. I'd kill for Shadows of the Empire. Yeah, that'd be cool. Moosely Kotor 2 without content mod is okay first time. Okay, well, maybe that would be the way to do it. Play it and then play it again with the uh, extra mods. Wait, your other name is Moosley? <laughs> I have thousands of names. Dude. Like fucking Voldemort. Jesus, bro. Mahler, I teach high school rhetoric. What are the origins of your rhetorical style? Do you have argument mentors or, I guess, the Jedi of this course? Um, I've talked about Arnifat before, but like I was always invested in debate. I was super early in school, and then one of the bigger influences was Christopher Hitchens. I watched every debate of his I could find. I found him to be hyper influential. Uh, possibly one of the greatest orators 
in human history. I, I thoroughly enjoyed listening to him and how he dismantled arguments. Uh, incredible. Real shame we lost him so early. But then um, another huge influence was Toll Biscuit. Uh, someone who's absolutely incredible on the side of integrity and sort of breaking down how things work and desperately trying to remain as objective as he could to better the industry he was a part of. And uh, he died early as well. Um, Pro I they probably all die early because of the stress of debating. <laughs> fucking got Maybe, to yeah. Um, I think both of them got hit by cancer. I can't remember oh, what it Jesus. was um, exactly for Hitchens, but yeah, it's uh, frustrating. But uh, both of them are considered extreme influences on the way I try to work. Uh, Longman in theory for Stargriff Mondays sold. Yeah, let's do it. Stargriff Mondays every Monday. Forever. People will love Loving this hearing team. that that's the name of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, Stargriff Mondays. I just wait till they see the logo and the, the little animation video that I'm going to have made. What's up, Kyle? Okay, we're pretty much at two hours, which is all the time Mahler has. It's also the end of the super chats. So this was a good kind of beginning introduction. And, you know, we're not going to hold Mahler to it, but so far he's down to do Mondays. So you know, at least for an hour or two. And we'll see you guys next Monday here for Stargrift. <laughs> episode Stargrift. zero. Done. Stargrift Mondays, episode zero. Yeah. Uh, three o'clock Pacific time. I'm open to making it earlier if you need to. It's fine as it is for now. Like I said, I there is no time you could. To be honest with you, if you would start it at like fucking 5 a.m. your time or something, it'd probably still work for me. Like something ridiculous, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Well, if you ever need to switch around the time, dude, like you know, I'm, yeah, ext no I'm extremely flexible. I'm extremely unprofessional in that sense where, like, <laughs> whatever, we just do what we want when we want. That's all good. All right. So, guys, leave a like on the video for this new team up and show that we got going on. And I uh, hope you have a great day. We'll see you guys next week. So, see yeah, folks. We're going to always have to do this. Back to basics here. And you're sounding like a separatist. Ha, ha, ha.